Hi there, Pam Corbin Litvak here. In part nine of my series on cognitive therapy, let's meet Nick. Nick's a brand new college grad and started a new job last month. With all Nick's got going for him, you would think he'd feel on top of the world. But instead, most of the time, Nick feels pretty low. He struggles with panic attacks and feelings of depression. If we were to look inside Nick's mind, we would see a storm of emotions brewing with shrieking winds and torrential rains. Have you ever felt battered by your feelings? Have you ever felt driven by fear or pounded by guilt or worthlessness? So far, we've talked about how our thoughts can shape our feelings, but the opposite can also happen. Our feelings can sometimes shape our thoughts. This is called emotional reasoning. For example, Nick says to himself, I feel like a failure. What belief would make sense with that feeling? I am a failure. Nick's feelings are running the show, creating their own version of reality. I feel guilty. That must mean I'm a horrible person. I feel scared. So I must be in danger. I feel angry. So the world must have done me wrong. I feel hopeless, so there must be no hope. The intensity of emotions like fear or sadness can sometimes contribute to the illusion. Nick thinks, this feeling is so strong that it must be true. Just like air currents in a storm, this cycle can begin to feed on itself, where the belief reinforces the emotion, which reinforces the belief, and so on. There are a couple problems with emotional reasoning. First, it can undermine our efforts to achieve important goals, like finishing a degree and getting a job. Feelings like fear and hopelessness can make us feel defeated before we even begin. Emotional reasoning also locks many of us into destructive behavior. For example, maladaptive guilt fosters compulsive behaviors like binge eating and other eating disorders heavy drinking, and addiction. Cognitive therapy can help. In this series, we're applying four principles of cognitive therapy to specific distorted thoughts. The first is doing our research, examining the evidence for our emotional reasoning. We can ask ourselves questions like, what exactly am I feeling? What thoughts are coming out of those feelings? What real evidence do I have to back up those feelings? Are my feelings ever wrong, or at least overblown? Second, we can learn to view our feelings in a more realistic way. Feelings are our personal emotional reflections on the world around us, but feelings are not facts. Feelings don't create our reality, they interpret it, giving each event some sense of meaning and emotional valence, good or bad, safe or scary, happy or sad, Problems start to occur when we don't separate feelings from facts. In psychological terms, one problem is called thought-action fusion, where we believe that just having a thought or feeling makes it more possible for that thought or feeling to come true. We feel worried, so naturally we believe something bad is about to happen. This forms the base for anxiety disorders and phobias. For example, Nick may have a fear of flying, but his fears don't prove that flying is any more dangerous than other ways to travel. Many facts suggest that flying is actually safer. Third, we want to find the right cost-benefit ratio. Writing the ups and downs of every emotion will make life feel like an emotional roller coaster. The highs and extreme lows of such thinking can be very costly over time. So we can ask ourselves, is the cost worth it? especially if our feelings don't always line up with reality. Fourth, we can use the golden rule, which involves treating others and ourselves with kindness and respect. This means not beating ourselves up over our struggles with emotional reasoning, but instead finding a constructive way to deal with it. If I were to say to you, I feel like garbage, you would know better than to take me literally. This is classic emotional reasoning. Feeling rotten and miserable doesn't prove that I am rotten and miserable, only that I feel I am. 
If you struggle with this, ask yourself, if a good friend were describing these feelings to me, would I agree with them? If not, why am I using a double standard for myself? Our self-worth is an unchanging quality that doesn't depend on our feelings. One emotional regulation technique involves accepting our feelings. Accepting is not the same as liking our feelings or agreeing with them. Acceptance is merely a starting point for change. When you feel a storm of emotion starting to brew, try simply noticing those feelings, accepting them without fear or judgment, and then moving on. Novelist Matt Haig describes the process this way. Understand, for instance, that having a sad thought, even having a continual succession of sad thoughts, is not the same as being a sad person. You can walk through a storm and feel the wind, but you know you are not the wind. That is how we must be with our minds. We must allow ourselves to feel their gales and downpours, but all of the time knowing this is just necessary weather. When I sink deep now, and I still do from time to time, I try and understand that there is another bigger and stronger part of me that is not sinking. It stands unwavering. Please like and share this content and take a few seconds right now to subscribe. Thanks so much.